Hi there, this is Paul Thompson from Spitfire Audio. I'm very excited today to be showing you the Olafur Arnold's Chamber Evolutions Library. Following on from our successful Symphonic Evolutions Library, it was the obvious thing for us to do to collaborate with Olafur to create the Chamber Evolutions Library. He worked with his partner in sound, Victor Arneson, who worked on his previous String Evolution Library to create a really amazing, unique tool that enables you to easily create sophisticated and dynamic sounding string arrangements very simply and using just a few sparse notes. It's also a great way to add complexity and depth to existing string arrangements. So you can see that within this library, there is the chamber grid and waves, and then the basses grid and waves. And the chamber group is 4333, so violin one, two, violas and celli, and then three basses. And these are recorded separately to enable you to either have the basses at pitch or with the octave below. Um, and this matches exactly our existing Spitfire Chamber Strings library. So it locks in incredibly well, recorded in the hall at Air Lindhurst for a really beautiful sound. So you can hear we've got a real range of different kind of things happening there. Some a little bit edgy and a little bit pitch changey and some things that are quite warm and sweet. And you'll see that the way that this is organized is we have subtle evolutions, thrills and episodic. And you'll recognize some of those titles from being familiar from previous evolutions. But we've also got dissonance as well. So if I scroll across, you'll see these represented by the different colored pegboards on the UI. And we can randomize within different sections or across the whole board. So this is using just the subtle evolutions. Now, if we go into the advanced folder and look at the individual evolutions, so let's select number six, which is detached waves. And you can hear how these are evolving even within just very, very simply within one, one uh, section. Let's look at number 10, which is the episodic trims. These are Saltesto. very very delicate sound but you can hear that there are these individual little trems happening as you go through let's look at number 13 this is a uh, sudden molto vib and this is within the section that we call thrills so this is slightly more extreme this gives you quite a wide range of possibilities from the different types of sound that you're getting And then for an example with, uh, with, without the Saltesto, for the kind of trems without the Saltesto, with the full sound. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if we look at number 17, this is the episodic pitch. So just check this out. I'm gonna hold down an octave so you can really hear clearly what's happening here. So you can use everything from the kind of most gentle, really beautiful, delicate little murmurings right the way through to really kind of queasy, unsettling sounding textures. And you can feather them in to the actual Evo grid as much as you want, or you can have just one, you know, you can you could play a part out and then pick one note that you want to be slightly edgy and then just stick the peg in the correct place for that one. Or you can just randomize and use it for inspiration. Very, very easy and quick to write using it like that. The other way that I like to use this is I like to have a traditional string arrangement, but then start to add in elements of evolution to give the arrangement um, slightly more interest to the, to the ear and more texture. Just lots of extra little things happening in the background that keep you interested as a listener. And it's not distracting you away from, you know, for example, if you're scoring to picture, it's not distracting you away from the picture but it's giving you a feeling of momentum and dynamism as the score progresses. Now, using the word feathering brings me to the first of Olafur's innovations for the library. And that is that on with this, with this exactly the same number of players as with the chamber strings, um, he's designed the sounds with Victor in such a way that the players feather in and out of each other. So the advantage of this is that you have um, a really clear sound. You can hear the individual players coming and going but also it makes, means the texture isn't too dense. So although you've got the, the feel and the weight of those strings, and I'll demonstrate that using the most vanilla sound, and we'll put that up, which is Evolution 1. It's simple, saltasto long. You can hear that it's evolving, but it doesn't sound like a very small number of players. It still sounds like a, a chamber section. Now, this is the first um, innovation. So feathering players in and out of each other to taste. Um, and again, this was designed and produced by Olafur. Um, if I if we go to the second innovation, this is something else that Olafur likes to do in his scores. It's a very characteristic sound from his scores. Now, these are one of my favorite parts. Um, incredibly simple, but really effective. Check this out. So we've got four different lengths for these. There's the shorter. Slightly longer with the uh, half note or the minim note. And then this one. And as you can hear, that's the longest. And then we have them all recorded with trem. And again with vibrato. And a really beautiful sound. And this is actually quite a good place to show you the effects of the different microphone positions. And you can use these to really tailor the sound and make it unique to you. close sound. This is a stereo mic pair. Here is our Decca tree. And finally the ambient mics. And between these mics you can really get the balance um, exactly as you want it but if we put them all in It's a really beautiful, intense, close and rich sound. And if you look at the bases, you'll see these seven essential selections. Mm -hmm. 
and you can hear there you've got that uh, really great rich sound um, down the bottom end. Also you have the sudden malto verb. And with these bass kind of extensions to the sound, you've got everything that you need to create the bottom end of your arrangement as well. With, if you want to go down below the cellos, if we look at the bass waves, and we'll put the close mics on again. So let's just see how that works in combination. So we'll load up the chamber waves and the basses waves. Set them both to the same MIDI channel. That sounds like this. Finally, let's set up a quick mix, have a listen to the chamber grid, um, and then you can hear what it sounds like with all of those mics in. So there we have it, Olaf Arnold's Chamber Evolutions, recorded in the Hall, Air Lindhurst, a location for recording scores such as Dunkirk, Beauty and the Beast, Wonder Woman, Dark Knight, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Lots of great scores recorded there. It's a wonderful sounding room. These are incredible players, first call London players. And we're very excited to be able to share this with you. Olaf Arnold's Chamber Evolutions. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.